Welcome back, and today we're going to be getting into Yammer. Yammer is an application within Microsoft 365 that is often talked about and in many cases misunderstood. A lot of organizations come to me and ask what it is or simply don't even know that it's there. And Yammer can be an extremely powerful tool, especially in today's landscape of business where most often your individuals and your employees within your organization or your customers are remote. And so they are not in the office, they're not standing around the water cooler, they're not engaging with each other and networking like they once would. And so that's where Yammer comes in and Yammer can really help with the communication, collaboration within your organization that's not work related specifically. Whereas some of the other applications like Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, Outlook, they're all designed for work, to be productive, to increase productivity, to ensure that your organization is getting the most out of your employees' time and your time and making sure that the end client is getting something that's delivered properly. Whereas Yammer is none, is none of those. Yammer is more of a social networking tool or a social media tool that is for your internal business. I always call it the internal Facebook. So this is for your employees to be able to communicate, create groups, uh, just have have fun, really. It, it's Microsoft calls it a social networking tool to openly connect and engage across your organization. Uh, translation, it's a tool for your employees to have fun with and communicate. And so the importance of Yammer and to distance it from other applications is it's less business related. So, so oftentimes in organizations you have birthdays, anniversaries, baby showers, maybe there are sporting events that your organization likes to communicate around, maybe there is other things in your industry that you want to keep an eye on like upcoming events or conferences, releases, whatever. In my industry, there are tons of conferences and releases constantly happening. So within the cloud computing world, if there is the Microsoft conference that's coming up in Orlando, you know, or they used to be in Orlando, now they're all online since COVID, but individuals who would be attending the conference, we might have communication, we might be able to talk about links, we want to talk about files, we want to talk about you know, polling, where we're going to eat, etc. Right? But we don't necessarily want to do that in some of the other applications, uh, whereas Outlook, it might get lost in, it, in an email thread. Microsoft Teams, it might bog up and really jam up what we're trying to accomplish on our day to day, right? It's not necessarily a part of our actual job duties. It's just something that's coming up that we want to track. And so that's where Yammer comes in. And so organizations use Yammer to communicate and collaborate effectively, creating an area where individuals can uh, have free space. You know, uh, we've helped organizations build out environments to communicate both internally and externally with partners around specific events. Like internally for our organization, we have a, since we're in the Washington DC area, we have a Washington Nationals and Washington Capitals uh, Yammer group. And we do that to talk about the caps, talk about the nationals, you know, free agency pickups. It's a way to in employees to engage together and to be able to have that communication without get it getting in the way and screwing up our feed that is business related. And so I'll show you a couple ways that we can create a community. So if we go right here, this is create a community. I'm within Yammer right now. This is actually a demo environment, but I'll go ahead and create a community. And I'll call this Washington Nationals. We can put a little description if we want. This will go out to individuals. We could just call a Washington Nationals community. Maybe you want to talk about a free agency, you know, um, whatever, you know, communicate. If I could spell. Maybe we want to complain, right? And so we can add individual members if we want. If there are specific people that we know are into the Nationals, maybe we want to include Nestor, you know, 
Uh, Ashley Simpson has been one that we have constantly picked on in these. We'll include Bart as well. Ashley is Bart's cousin, if you didn't know. Uh, Adele is in here, I believe. Yep. And so maybe we know that these individuals like the Nationals, and we can go in and we can invite Irwin and some of our other members. And then right now we have it as public. That means anyone in our network network can view and join the community. We can edit this if we want. We can create it private, so only approved community members. A good example for a private one would be a baby shower where you don't want certain individual members. Maybe it's a surprise and you're planning it out. So we're going to we're going to choose public to allow anyone to be able to join this, but it doesn't necessarily take up their feed. If it was a baby shower, maybe it's a retirement party, something like that where you're collaborating on, maybe you want to keep that private because you want it to be a surprise. So we'll go ahead and create this Washington Nationals community. And now we have it. And so we can upload a picture. We could replace this with a Washington Nationals logo if we wanted. We can write a detailed um, description, which we already did, which shows us um, who's a part of it. We can add additional information to the community. Maybe we want to put the schedule for the Nationals up here. We could assign related communities. Maybe we want to group all the sports communities together. We could add the Capitals and any uh, other sporting communities. Maybe you have one for the Super Bowl that is coming up and you want to make sure that these are all related. So that way you could, you know, have a provide a really easy way for individuals within your organization to be able to move things around uh, and be able to navigate effectively. Then you could have files, so you could upload. You know, maybe they have giveaways. Maybe you want to put the schedule. Maybe you want to upload whatever. You know, flyers, etc. I'm going to go back. And then there are events. This is where you could say, you know, what we have an upcoming event. There is a uh, we're going to watch a game together or we're going to all go to a to a game together or whatever. You could create an event. Now, once you have gone through this and you've set it up the way that you like, you can hit this little heart guy and that will favorite it and notice it has then jumped to my favorites. If I unheart it, it drops down to all communities. And if I heart it, then it jumps back up into the favorites. Now I can start a discussion. So I could say, you know, Ryan Zimmerman for the Nationals, for those of you paying attention, is just re-signed. So we could say Ryan Zimmerman is back and put an explanation point. And then we could add a little GIF and we could see if Ryan Zimmerman exists. Hopefully he does. And there he, uh, there he is. There's Ryan. And we'll choose, we'll choose this one. And then we could say, you know, Ryan's back. Make sure that we add the people. We could say... Uh, you know, maybe we want to tag somebody specific or we could just say, you know, we could change it to a poll like uh, Ryan Zimmer is back. You know, what do you think? And you could say, you know, uh, answer one is love it. Uh, answer two, I like it. And answer three, uh, who, who, who is Ryan? And you could you could add that poll uh, if you want, and uh, and go ahead and hit ask, and that just kind of sparks conversation. You know, this would have other by otherwise been something that maybe you walk down the hallway and you say, hey, did you see Ryan's and Ruins back, and people start to chop up conversation, and it really builds to your company morale, which in a remote environment is extremely important. You want people to be communicating, you want people to be having fun, and if somebody wanted to respond with a comment, they could say, you know. Woohoo! And then uh, add a GIF of their own to say, you know, Ryan Zimmerman. Let's see, some other things are on there of Ryan. We can have him uh, where he almost got hit by the pitch. So yeah, th this is how you're able to communicate, collaborate. Members can do different things. And so this was a poll. Some of the other ways that you can do is a, a, a straight up discussion, which is similar to a normal post. So we could just say discussion. And you can see that this is just a normal a normal type of post. We could also hit this little guy right here, and that makes it an announcement. And when make, clicking on that, it will it will amend the way that we're we're using it. So we could hit post, and then we'll say this is announcement. See how it made it announcement. So that will just ping other people. We went over poll. We went over discussion. Then there's a question. You know, we could do a question. Who's your favorite national? 
again, this is just meant to be fun. Uh, we can format this and we could bold, we could italicize, uh, we can do whatever, whatever we'd really like, you know, we could add links here, we could bullet it out, um, share, comment, post, you know, whatever we want. And then we could add it in. And there's a question. The last one would be praise. And so the praise is for internal. And so you could say, uh, thank you to, thank you to, to Ashley for putting together the watch party, right? So thank you, Ashley, for putting together the watch party. And then, yep, praise. And we could say, yeah, there we go. Congratulations, you know, thank you so much, way to go. And that'll go out to say, that's just a show of respect. Again, not necessarily in the in the working environment, like a Microsoft Teams or a SharePoint or Outlook, but still a place where we're capturing this and we're giving people a break, you know? Uh, again, within the remote environment, it's really hard for people to detach work and community. And Yammer is a really fun place to do that where we can, uh, you know, just take a break. We could communicate on a, on a level of which we might have done within the office. Then here in the pin, you could pin links. Again, you could add a link and you could say, you know, MLB.com, hit OK. And then people would be able to to search for MLB.com. You could add the schedule here. You could add the giveaways. You could add, you know, whatever you want. Uh, and then the info, that's where you would be able to change the information around your Washington Nationals community uh, and then add it more description and, and just kind of go that way. There also is a phone app for this. I didn't go too far deep into this in terms of the cover photo. If you wanted to upload a cover photo, you can do that. Put Nationals Park back there. Maybe I'll do that right now. And there we go. Now we've uploaded Cloudette wearing a Washington Nationals hat. We've uploaded a background that has uh, Nationals Park there. And so now we are able to, uh, you know, give it a little personal touch there so that users can really engage and feel like that our community, our, our um, company really cares about uh, our employee engagement, which you which you should. You should care about this engagement. And Yammer can be a powerful tool of bringing communities together. Maybe you have people in different areas, you know, that maybe we're not necessarily replacing the, wa the water cooler talk or the hallway talk. Maybe you have locations across the United States and you want to get everybody together virtually. So Yammer is a good way to do that as well. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you would please like and subscribe. If you want to hear about any other the new tools, maybe some updates, go ahead and leave that in the comments below and I'll get to them. And until next time, guys, see you.